Many types of controls such as drop downs and sliders and buttons can be created right into Spotfire text areas. Now there's two major types of controls. There's action controls and there's property controls. Let's take a look at some examples. In this NFL running back analysis, I have different action controls that will apply different bookmarks. When I hit Roger Craig, it's going to highlight Roger Craig on all of my visualizations. When I hit Hall of Famers, it will mark all of the Hall of Famers. So to create this, I can do a demo where I'll just select some values here and I'll create a new bookmark. I'll name this demo. Now in my text area, I can edit my text area and I can add another action control here. So I'll hit, say versus, and then the action control is a little exclamation mark icon. Now this will allow me to make the name of the button. So I can say, for instance, demo, and I will make this a button. I could also do a link or an image. If I wanted this to be an icon, I could use an icon image. Now here I can apply different bookmarks. So my demo bookmark, I'll add that here. And whatever actions I add here will execute when I hit the button. So I'll hit OK here and I'll save this. And now when I close this, if I go ahead and hit demo, you'll see that that bookmark has been applied. Now these bookmarks can also be used to create a walkthrough analysis where I can actually navigate to different pages and apply different markings to show the narrative and the insights that I'm trying to convey. As I continue to hit next, it'll move through this walkthrough analysis with my narratives. Another common use of the action control is to create a button that resets the analysis. So here, if I mark different values on my visual analysis and then I hit the reset button, it will reset it back to its default state. So in the text area, you'll see that this is an action control. And for here, I've gone to functions and I've added the reset all filters and reset all markings functions. You have other interactivity functions here. You can also choose to open up things like the details on demand and filter panel, as well as navigate to different pages and even specific visualizations on those pages. You may also choose to do expense reports or any other type of PDF reports and export those directly from a button. You can do scripting like Iron Python, which we'll show a little later, and you can do some data functions for advanced analysis, and you can trigger those for execution as well. Now, the other type of control to talk about are property controls, but first let's talk about how properties work in Spotfire. Okay, you know you have a DXP, and in that DXP, you can have multiple different data tables. And in those data tables, you can have multiple different columns. Well, a document property exists at the DXP level and is accessible to your entire visual analysis. A data table property exists at a data table level and is only visible to that data table and not to other data tables in your analysis. And a column property exists at the column level and is for a specific column and is not visible to other columns, including columns that are in other data tables. Now, since document properties are accessible to the entire visual analysis, it's typically what we'll use. However, there are some situations where table and column properties will be used. Now, document properties are located in file, document properties, and in the properties tab. And data table and column properties are in the data menu. You have data table properties and column properties. And when you go to each of these, you'll see a tab for properties. This is for data table, and there's a similar one for column properties. Now, here I have a property control that as I change this to a different metric, you'll see that these axes change on the Y axis as well as the coloring here. So as I change this to maybe commute minutes, you'll see that change across the whole dashboard. So I'm gonna start from scratch and show you how I set this up. Okay, here I'm gonna go to file and document properties and I'm gonna create a new property, which I'm just gonna call my statistic. And this will be the statistic I want to show on all of my charts in my dropdown selector. Now in my text area, I'm gonna create a property control, which is in this text, this little checkbox icon. So here I have options for labels, input fields, dropdown list, list box, sliders. I'm gonna use a dropdown list. Now here I can select if this is a document property, a data table property, or a column property. And I can see them all there, and I can also change the control type if I'd like. Here I'm gonna assign this to the my statistic value, so I'll leave that highlighted. And then I want this to be a column selection. I could also do fixed values and just type in values that I want to show up in my dropdown list. Um, I can do numerical ranges, uh, unique values in a column if I have a lot of different values in a column. Here I'm going to do across multiple columns, I want to do a certain column selection and I'm going to pull it from my New York City demographics table. So to select columns, I can hit this and I need to make a, uh, a column property that will say whether or not this column should show. So a Boolean type and I will say show column. 
and I will say the default value is false, and I'll hit OK, and you'll see when I go to show column, now everything's been moved over here to false. So let me choose a few of these. I'll choose income and a few others. Okay, now I've added a few values. I'm gonna hit OK. And here it's gonna allow that those values only to show up in my dropdown list. So when I change my dropdown, for instance, to income, I can go to File, Document Properties, and you'll see in this properties that that now says income. So whatever is in this dropdown list will be in that document property. So now I need to parameterize my charts. I can right click on my axis selectors and just go set from property. And here I can choose my statistic and I'll hit okay. And here I'm gonna do the same here. So set from property and I'm gonna choose my statistic and I'll set okay. So now that has changed to income. And then here I can go to my chart properties and my map and I can go to my map layer for my demographics and in my colors I can also right click and go set from property. So you can set from property on various different uh, uh, column selectors within a visual analysis. So here I'm gonna choose my statistic again and you'll see that this has been colored. And I can style these colors to match the rest of my visualization uh, page if I'd like. Uh, but here you'll see just from functional purposes, as I change this to commute minutes, all of the charts are changing to reflect the, the value that's in this document property. Now, this is also a document property on new location where this is an input field. And if I go to file document properties, you'll see that as GPS or as new coordinates. So this is a string type and this is going directly into a calculated column. So if I go down to this calculated column that I have selected, here I'm parsing out with, I'm pulling in that document property, my coordinates, I'm parsing it out with a split and then I'm doing a great circle distance to calculate the distance between my store location and all the other data in my analysis. So I'm doing a distance calculation here. To put in a document property, you simply need to right click on it and insert it as a value if it's a numerical value or a text if it's text. So you can just do that and then that will bring in your document property into your calculated columns and those will be refreshed anytime something changes. So here I can change my new store to the, that location and I'll put that in here and you'll see all the my new store moved and these charts all changed. Now document properties can also be used in data functions. Here I'm trying to plan multiple clinics in the uh, Montreal area and I'm going to do this by drawing Voronoi polygons and I have this slider here which is a property control that will change the number of clinics so if I want 12 clinics this will re-execute and give me 12 clinics and now I'll show you in my data function properties I can go to parameters and I've set this up so that my number of clusters variable goes to a document property and it's this Voronoi clusters document property so that's been set up for me and I've also gone into my slider and made this a slider property control type that links to Voronoi clusters. And every time this changes, it will rerun my data function. Now in this routing analysis, I also have these property controls linked to a data function. So if I copy map coordinates and place them in here, it's not gonna do anything until I hit the calculate button, which will then run my data function and calculate the driving directions to that point. So the way this has been set up has again been with property controls, but I've used fixed values for just the values that my script expects to receive to run the data function correctly. Now I also have set up here a button for an action control that runs the data function whenever I hit it. Now I did mention that I was gonna show uh, different Iron Python scripts. So as an example, I have here different uh, view modes for different types of layers. So if you look into my layers, you'll see different, uh, lots of different layers and I want different configurations of certain layers on different view modes. So when I hit satellite, it's gonna run this and it's gonna turn on just the right layers that I want. So the way that this has been set up in this text area, I have these different action controls and I've formatted these as a link type. Now, when each, each one is tied to a different Iron Python script, and when I go to edit on my Iron Python script, you'll see here that I've set this up to bring in the map chart uh, properties and methods, and then to turn on and off different layers based off those layer names.
So in summation, you can see how these controls make your visual analysis more than just a report or a dashboard. You're actually able to create an entire application experience. You can also do what if scenarios and advanced analytics, all kinds of different things by using these controls and their extensibility.